Hi, um, I'm here today with Zach Bookman of OpenGov. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you. I love what you're doing, um, but I have to say I don't completely understand it, and I think a lot of people sort of know what you're trying to do, but don't understand the mechanics of, of it. Um, so, first, tell me, you've had an interesting career. You were an attorney, then you were in Afghanistan sort of helping these generals uh, sort of uh, do transparency, transparency assessments. Um, uh, and then suddenly you hooked up with Joe Lonsdale, this very high profile serial entrepreneur in DC, and this young Stanford graduate, Nate Levine, to create this company. How did that happen? So I grew up near government in okay. Washington, DC. My father worked at the National Academy of Sciences. I was an entrepreneur from a young age, but I think either my father or the area influenced me. And I studied government in college, then I went to law school, I did a master's degree in public administration. Okay. And, and then I went to uh, Mexico. So you, you, you got your law degree and then you got your master's in public administration. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, so with the, with the aim of doing? With the aim, I think, of doing exactly what we're doing now. I okay. just didn't quite know that. Okay. Um, I went to Mexico after grad school and studied corruption in the Mexican government. Oh, that's interesting. I had a brief law career as a law clerk and then a trial litigator. I actually met Joe through my co-clerk who worked with Joe and the Stanford Review newspaper when they were in college, studying oh, okay. computer science. Okay. And after uh, that, I went to Afghanistan. I served as an advisor to two United States Army generals on the anti-corruption task force, which was a transparency task force set up at the International Security Assistance Forces headquarters in Kabul. Okay. And we started OpenGov in 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, I was actually in a shipping container in Kabul and. Joe and Nate and, and some other Stanford computer scientists and mathematicians and physicists um, had been doing for the prior couple of years, uh, and, and I was involved as well, uh, data visualization on mm -hmm. pension and budget data after, okay. the, after the recession. Okay. Basically, we were trying to understand how screwed up governments were going to be as their revenues dried up after the recession. Okay. And we started talking with the city of Palo Alto, the state of California. We'd say, hey, give us your budget data. We can help you drill through it, see trends across the years share your financial data on the internet. And they said, wow, this sounds really useful. How do we get you our budget data? And we said, what do you mean, how do you get us your budget data? You're the budget director, or you're the city manager. <laughs> right. They turned around and said, listen, naive kids, why don't you come sit with us and look at our enterprise systems? Okay. Which we did. Which were ancient. And we saw green screens. I'm sorry, you saw what? We saw green screens. Okay. Whether it was Oracle or SAP or many others, we saw technology that was created before the advent of the internet. Okay. And good-hearted and, 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 and strong-thinking public administrators struggling against technology that, that was really impeding things. They, they actually couldn't see where the money goes across very complicated enterprises. The elected officials were asking questions because they didn't know what was going on. They're, they're supposed to make policy. Right. The citizens are losing trust and getting disengaged. We said, wow, we got to do something. We can solve this. The internet can solve this. And we started Open Gun. Okay. Fast forward. Now almost four years, and it's become the cloud platform that governments across the country, state and local governments, like cities, counties, school districts, special districts, use for financial and performance intelligence so they can see what's going on internally and transparency so they can communicate that to elected officials, citizens, the whole world. And the vision is, and it's rapidly becoming reality, that all of these governments in the country can start to learn and share from each other by getting comparisons and benchmarks. I love that. I mean, it's technology that's you know, solving real world problems that seem so intractable. Uh, in part because, I mean, everybody knows, uh, you better than anyone, I'm sure, how uh, backwards government uh, offices are. I mean, you're dealing with um, you know, tax revenue, non-tax revenue, different departments. How do you, A, get that first meeting with these city and county officials, and then B, what is the onboarding process? It seems like it would be so daunting. It's all daunting. We've chosen just about the hardest thing we, we could do. Um, a lot of the top public administrators are very hard to contact. They're surrounded by layers of bureaucracy and they're swimming in work to do. Totally overwhelmed. Um, so it's a classic kind of enterprise SaaS challenge, sales and marketing challenge. Um, we do everything from go to conferences and give talks to writing content to calling them right on the phone to okay. going and visiting them. Um, the product is getting really compelling. Mm -hmm. They're struggling, we can help, the value propositions are really resonating, so that's exciting. But bringing them on board, even after you go through the enterprise sales process, is incredibly difficult. The 
The data is very complicated. It often comes out of these old legacy systems that are siloed. It comes out in blobs or jumbles and we have to try to make sense of it. The, the value of what we do is structuring that data according to their unique hierarchies and, and charts of accounts. And that uh, opens up a lot of possibilities for business intelligence and comparisons and all the workflow uh, products that we're, we're delivering. That's great, so it sounds like there's a huge systems integration component. How many employees do you have? We have 80 and we're growing fast. Okay, so do your employees spend, like how much time do they actually spend trying to collate all that information and make sense of it? We spend tons of time on everything. This mm -hmm. is very, uh, startups are very labor intensive and as we, as we move through the kind of curve towards a little bit of maturity, we're finding our way with a lot of good processes, but we have a customer success team that's absolutely dedicated, as is the whole company, to mm -hmm. the success of our government customers, and we're helping them extract the data, transform it, load it. We're doing a lot of integrations uh, work, but, but we're also helping them try to take advantage of the software once they have it and, and make it habitual across the organization because we can save so much time for so many people across the enterprise. We can help them make better decisions and ultimately allocate our resources much more efficiently. Right, and this is a subscription product then? So they're, you're managing it on an ongoing basis. How do you charge? This is uh, software as a service. Okay. And we charge an annual subscription. And based we have to on how it, many people are using it? Or? Based on their budget size, actually. And now oh. we have multiple products, so based on what they want and how many are using it and how, how large the government is. Okay, and they can't lie to you about their budget size, I guess, because you no, figured it's all, that out pretty quickly. What's <laughs> exciting about, there's, there's a lot of things exciting about this, but one of those is, this is all public data. It's uniquely situated for a cloud layer that sits over the 80,000 siloed government systems that are in use in the 80,000 governments in the United okay. States. And it's all public data. It's just not available because it's trapped in the system. So okay. we're helping to bring it out, structure it, and then enable some really powerful things with data science, predictive analytics, and machine learning. Okay, and we were talking, Fiona, before we went on air, and you said you're now working with 750 organizations. Um, you said you're working with city and county officials as well as school districts. Can you talk about like some of the specific challenges of each and maybe which is the easiest to work with? Absolutely, and they're, they're all sorts of different sizes we're working with. Miami and Pittsburgh and Detroit and Minneapolis and we're working with tiny little towns all over the place. Um, one town, Stanton, California, a working class town, um, uh, they actually used OpenGov to find more budget to hire two cops for their human trafficking and sex trafficking task force. Oh great. And it's having an impact on sex trafficking, which is something we're super proud of. Great. And want to help the communities right there at the service delivery level. We work with we're working with big counties, small counties. School districts are really important. They're extremely complicated. These mm -hmm. are where we send our children, spend lots of money to try to educate them. Right. And it's actually really hard to know how much we're spending on lunch for elementary school kids at these schools and how that compares to other schools. So there's incredibly interesting and challenging problems to solve. You know, this is sort of a strange question, but I'm just wondering if culturally you have to overcome um, barriers. I I'm just wondering if, you know, s spending can get out of hand. Or do you encounter many public officials who are not that excited about necessarily knowing what their next door neighbors, or uh, exposing their information to their next door neighbors? Uh, you know, is any of the, the information, I guess, anonymized so that they know what people are spending, but not necessarily who's spending what, or no? Well, it's a, there's been a lot of counterintuitive uh, parts to building this business. We mm -hmm. started with transparency, mm -hmm. helping governments let their community members know where the money's going. And we've moved into analytics and business intelligence and then budgeting and comparisons and really deep, deeper, harder problems. And we've been surprised at the positive reactions from government officials. A lot of people said, these people don't want transparency or oh, they're just trying to hide. Right. It's not been the case. Um, a lot of people are extremely excited when they see the technology say, oh my gosh, I've been I spent four hours yesterday doing that and you just showed me that in four minutes. Can we please talk? Okay. And then you have to go through a process. They have, to, they have to bring in the CFO and the CIO and you need to present to them and that takes time and it's challenging. Mm -hmm. But if we can get a government official to lay eyes on the software, it's typically a very exciting conversation. And is that, is that opt-in? I mean, do you, can people buy the service where you're helping them analyze their own information and they can, they can see it and then if they want to, they can also see what everybody else is doing, or is that just all, is that, is it all sort of encompassed? Yeah, encompassed. government officials can use the software to start comparing their financial data with other cities, counties, 
and other governments okay. around the country, not just their neighbors. Okay. Uh, we've got to wrap up. I did want to ask you about this upcoming election season, or I guess ongoing election season. This seems like a great opportunity for you to step in with your, you know, data and sort of, you know, puncture some of the truthiness <laughs> coming out of uh, the candidates. Is that something that you're thinking about doing? We are or? pouring ourselves into good content and content marketing, okay. and we'll be able to produce some really exciting public benchmarks and feed data to people who want to use it, academics or think tanks and others who want to you know, create, whether it's a transparency scale or understand where money is flowing across mm -hmm. our, our nation of governments. Right. Um, that said, we're apolitical. So we love our software, we love helping governments, but we don't really enter the, the politics fray, right, even right, though right. many of our customers do, of course. Right. Great. Zach, so nice to meet you. Thank, Thank you for you coming so by. Thank you so much for having me. So much for having me.